Hi, this is Mrs. Freifeld, and this is the first lesson in Unit 10, Geometry. Again, you're going to need pencil and paper. You're going to have to review some of the other graphs and plots, so if you want to get colored pencils too, that's great. Okay, these are the things that we're going to review right now, the percent bar graphs, box and whisker plots, dot plots, and stem and leaf plots. I want you to draw the percent bar graphs. You should be able to do this by now. Pause your video and get this work done yourself before you look at the answers. Okay, it's time to check your work and see how you did. Okay, these are the correct answers. For you to be able to, to make a percent bar graph, you need to find out what percent of the colors, the student's favorite colors were green or purple or red. And to find that percent, this is what you're looking for, it had to have given you a fraction, and it did. You just had to work to find out what the fraction was. The first thing you should have done is add up these colors and get your denominator, which is 50. Your numerator, or what you're talking about, in this case, what percent are green, so 12 is your numerator. And you needed to Tebow that, 12 divided by 50. And when you did that, you should have had 0.24. You move your decimal point two places to make it 24%. So that's how you do this. And then to go in and fill in the graph, well, this one over here is really easy. 24%, you just make it so that the green ends at 24%. And always the first one here is easy as well. I made it start at zero and it ended at 24%. Now this one here, the purple, you have 16%. Again, it's easy over here. It goes straight down at 16%. It's a little tougher on this one. To figure out where the 16% is gonna end, you take the first one, which is the 24%, add on the 16%, so it needs to end at 40%, and you can see here that it does. So then you need to add on your, your red to that. So you know the purple ended at 40%, you know red was 30%, so the red should end at 70%. And you can see that this Red is 30%. Here's 10, here's 20, and here's 30%. But it ends at 70% because you're stacking them. Over here, the red is very simple. Just make the bar go until it gets to be 30%. Now to figure out where the blue ends, you take the 70, you add on the 24% that's blue, and it should have ended at 94%, and it does. You can see that down here. This is 94%. Again, over here, you just make the blue go to 24%, and you can see it's the same length as the green. And then you have 6% that's yellow, and it's the remaining part. Go ahead and verify that when you add them up, it's 100%. Okay, I'm giving you another stem and leaf plot, and I want you to find this information. Go ahead and pause the video while you do your work. The first thing you need to do to find this information is probably pull the data off of the stem and leaf plot, and, and it's going to be in order. Now, for you to be able to find the range, you're going to take the biggest number, you're going to subtract the smallest number, so the range of this set of data is 26. To find the median, it's going to be the number that's in the middle, so I'm going to start on the smallest to largest, and I'm going to keep working my way to the middle of the data. So I can see that the median is 13. Now to find the lower quartile range, I've already used 13, so I can't use it again. So I'm dealing with these numbers right here to find the lower quartile. And I see that there's two numbers in the middle. If you add that up, it's four, 
and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the lower quartile range is 2. Now to find the upper quartile range, again I'm using this top set of numbers. I can't use 13 because that's the median. And I work my way in, and again I see there's two numbers in the middle. So with that it would be, you add those two together and it's 48. And 48 divided by 2, you're going to find is 24. So that's the upper quartile range. The inner quartile range, this is the sad thing is I have just forgot to tell you that. The inner quartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So the inner quartile range is 22. And when I'm asking you what is the mode, I'm going to look over here at my data set and I can see that 2 is my mode. And now I'm going to try and make a box and whisker plot. So using the information that we just got, I need you to draw a box and whisker plot. Pause your video and do it on your own. To make the box and whisker plot, I go to the smallest number, which is 1. There's the lower whisker. 27 is the upper whisker. Oh, and it's not even on here. That's about where it would be. And then it says the median is 13. So I make that line there. It says the lower quartile is 2. It says the upper quartile is 24. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and draw the box and whisker plot. So I connect these lines. I connect the lower quartile to the median to the upper quartile. There's the box. There's my whisker. And the inner quartile range is the distance between here and there. And then once you've got that, then you can put the great cat on top because that's what he's good for. Okay, again, I want you to try and do these on your own before you check out the answer. Here's the first question from this dot plot. What is the mode of the set of data? The mode of the set of data is the number that's listed the most. And I can see that the mode is both 3 and because they're both listed three times. What is the range in the set of data? The range is always the biggest number minus the smallest number. The range in the set of data is four. What is the median in the set of data? Do it on your own. find the median, the first thing I'm going to do is pull the values off of this dot plot or line plot, plot, and there they are. The median is the number that's in the middle. So I'm going to work my way in. The median of that set of data is 3. And now we're going to start our geometry unit. What you don't have, and I wish you did, was this formula chart on your desk so that you could use it while you're doing the work. So this is what they use on the star test. And I'm going to let you know that I change it a bit. I asked my kids to add these on. We're going to start out with the area. So that's what I'm dealing with first. In the area of a triangle, this is the one that they give. This is the one I prefer to use. They are identical. Whether you multiply the base and the height times one half, or you, you first multiply the base and the height and you divide it by two, you're going to get the exact same number. To me, this one's easier to use. Same with the trapezoid. Wait and copy this one down later. For today, you're going to be using the rectangle or parallelogram. I don't know if we're going to get to the triangle or not. What you're going to wind up doing is writing this down somewhere in your notes that the area of a triangle is this or this. 
the area of a rectangle or a parallelogram is this. And as long as you're writing it, keep your notes with you. The area of a trapezoid is either this or it's this. So go ahead and get those written down. So what is a rectangle? It's a four-sided flat shape with straight sides where all of the interior angles are right angles. So the, all of these right angles are 90 degrees. The opposite sides are parallel. That means they run side by side and they never touch each other. In fifth grade, I'll bet you they did this and told you the two L's in the word parallel run side by side. That kind of helps you remember. And they're congruent. Congruent means they're the same size and the same shape. So I can tell, we're talking about the opposite sides, I can tell that this blue side is congruent to this side. And this little line means it's congruent. And I can tell that this pink line is also congruent to this bottom one. And since I've already used this single line and these two are congruent, now I'm going to use these two lines side by side. This line is congruent to that line. What is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is a flat shape with four straight sides where opposite sides are parallel. Again, I'm looking at these. I see the two L's are parallel. So this line is parallel to this line, and this line is parallel to this line. The opposite sides are equal in length, and the opposite angles are equal. So they are congruent. This side is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to this side in a parallelogram. So what is the circumference? This is something from fifth grade where you measured the distance around the outside edge of an object. That's what the circumference is. Now we're going to be talking about areas not so much circumference right now. What is area? Well, the area is the number of square units needed to cover a shape. So the area is not the circumference, which is this plus this plus this plus this. It's, it's counting how many of these little square shapes are inside of the figure. So the area of this triangle it, are these little squares, even though they're kind of cut off here. That's the area, how many little squares fit in it. And same with this parallelogram. Remember, the area of rectangles. When you were in elementary school, you learned that area equals length times width. Well, they changed it on you in middle school, and now they say area equals base times height. Well, here's my base here, and here's my height, here. I could also say that this is my length, and this is my width. The point is, you multiply the length or the base times the width or the height. So the area of this figure here would be, your length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So your base equals 5 and your height is one, two, three. So base times height is 15 units squared. Okay, I want you to try these. Pause your um, video and see if you can do this yourself. Okay, to find the area of a square with side lengths measuring 12 inches, remember if this is a square, if this is 12, so is this, so is this, and so is this. All sides are the same length. The formula for finding the area of a rectangle, and a square is a rectangle, area equals base times height, area equals 12 times 12. 
So the area equals 144 inches squared. Okay, let's try another one. I don't see why it didn't go away. Let's try it again. A three ring binder measures 12 inches by eight and a half inches. What is the area of the front cover of the binder? Pause your video and see if you can figure out what it is now. Okay, the formula for finding this is area equals base times height. So area equals 8.5 times 12. This is kind of hard to see as I go through these colors. Here's your 12. I'm going to try and solve it over here to the side and see if it doesn't work out better. I'm going to go 8.5 times 12. So this is 10, carry the 1, this is 17, erase, X, enjoy. This is 5, this is 8, add them up. 0, 12, carry the 1, that's 10. I have one number behind the decimal point in the problem. I have one number behind it in the answer. The answer is 102 inches squared. You did an excellent job. See you tomorrow.